Hey guys, uh, Ben Tate here for CG Tuts once again. And uh, I just thought to throw together kind of a short tutorial or uh, maybe even a quick tip here on uh, an often overlooked feature in Max, and that would be selection sets. Um, this would be more aimed at the beginner crowd. So if you're uh, more familiar with using Max and uh, have been using it for a while, you're probably already aware of uh, this feature. But if not, uh, it's extremely useful when you're working on big scenes. All right, so I have a, a scene here that just has a bunch of teapots, spheres, and cylinders. And uh, we'll just use this as an example for now. All right, and uh, lots of times when you're working on a giant scene and it has like, you know, a couple hundred objects or even a couple thousand objects, uh, selecting things and um, hiding them or unhiding them can be quite difficult and time consuming. Uh, most of the time you'll either have to, you know, click around in the viewport and select them manually or even hit H and uh, just grab them in the list and you know select your pieces and then you can uh, get them out of there uh, by hiding them or whatever you want to do. Okay, but there is actually uh, a really good tool built into Max that can actually handle that for you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is let's just grab maybe our uh, teapot. So I'm just going to hit H and you can also open up this uh, select dialog by clicking on the uh, button up at the top here in the Max interface. All right, I'm just going to hit S here to select all the spheres and hit OK. All right, and that's going to select them all in the scene. Okay, and uh, if you come up to the top here in this section right here, uh, this is the selection sets uh, section of the interface. All right, so if you have some already made, you'll be listed in this uh, little pull down here. And to create them, we'll just open up this uh, button here with the ABC icon. Okay, so we click that. Let's get this little dialog here, and we can actually save out selections of objects. Um, or even sub objects, and I'll show you that in a, in a minute here after we get this uh, out of the way. Okay, so we have a couple of icons here, and let's just click on the first one here, which is create a new selection set. Okay, so we're gonna click on that, and we'll just call this maybe spheres. Okay, and all those objects that we have selected will be added into this set, and if we hit this little plus sign here, it'll actually drop this down, and you can see we have all of our spheres in here. Okay, so the benefit of setting these up is if we just close this for a second, and I just deselect everything in the scene, uh, rather than having to go in and select these if I wanted to uh, move them around or hide them, we can just actually go up to this little drop down here and you can see it says spheres there. So I'm just going to click that and we immediately have our selection uh, back in the viewport. So we don't have to go in and actually manually select them. We can just drop that down. It's a really quick way to uh, select large groups of objects or sub objects. Okay, so let's do another one here. I'm just going to hit H again and hit C. We'll select our cylinders and let's go up and hit this again. And we'll just create a second group here and we'll just call this C. Okay, and as you can see, all of our cylinders are in there. Okay, so we have a few other options here. Uh, we have the remove button here. Okay, and this will actually delete the selection set, so I'm just going to hit that and I'll remove it. It'll also work if you want to remove objects from a selection set. Okay, so if I click on this uh, top sphere here, 55, and hit the remove button, it's going to remove that from the set. Okay, so just Get a couple of those out of there and then if we pull this back down the spheres you can see that they're all selected but the ones we removed from the group here aren't selected okay all right so let's add another one here i'm just going to grab uh, those cylinders again let's just close this for a second okay we'll make a new set with this okay so let's add a new set call it cylinders and we'll also do it with the teapots here. So let's hit H again, hit T, and OK. And create a new one here. Let's call that teapots. OK, so we have uh, the three selection sets here, and we can select those anytime by using this drop down. We can also modify uh, what's included in each of these groups. Uh, you can have multiple objects in, this, in different groups if you want, or you can have them all contained inside one. OK, so let's just expand this for a second. And let's just actually drop it down and we'll expand the teapots one as well. Okay, and if you want to move things from one group to another, you can actually just click them in the list and just drag them down and drop them on the teapots there. And then we'll move that cylinder uh, down into this group. So when we select the teapots, it's going to have that cylinder 50 selected. Okay, another way to do it, if you want to even have it in multiple selections or multiple sets, just click on one. And if you hold down control, you can actually clone it down into the next section or any of the other sections. Okay, so now we have a uh, cylinder 49 selected in both these sets. Okay, so pretty simple, nothing really complicated here. Now we have a few other options here. Uh, we can add uh, selected objects in the scene to a particular set. 
So say we had the cylinders group here selected, and then I go into the viewport here and click on this plane. You hit this little plus sign, it's gonna add that into this group. Okay, so pull this back down and we'll just go down to the bottom here. Uh, you can see we have plane 01 added to that group. Okay, so now every time we select the cylinders, it's gonna select the plane as well. Okay, and this is very, very useful uh, when you're working on very big scenes with a lot of objects. Okay, so. Okay, and next we have the subtract selected objects. Okay, so what this is, is it'll remove a selected object from a particular set. Okay, so what we wanna do here is actually click on the set first. Okay, and let's just maybe grab the plane here. We'll select on the viewport. And now if we hit the negative sign, it's gonna remove the plane from that set. Okay, so if we expand this again, and go down to the bottom, uh, you can see the plane's no longer uh, in that group. Okay, and if we select the cylinders again, uh, it just selects the cylinders without the plane. Okay, so that's how you remove them or add them. Okay, and uh, next here we have select objects in a set, which will select all the objects in a particular set. So if we click the spheres and hit that, it's gonna select all the objects in that set. Okay. Let's deselect those. Uh, next one is select objects by name, which will open up the dialog here. And you can either grab a selection in here and select it, and then you can add it to a group or remove it from a group, etc. Okay. And the last icon here is highlight selected objects. Okay, so if we grab, uh, say, this teapot and we hit this, it's going to select um, that particular teapot in any of these groups. So it'll highlight the group that that's contained in as well as highlighted in the list. And if you have this object in multiple groups, it's gonna uh, highlight that in each one. Uh, so you can kind of see where it's located and what group it's contained in. Okay, so uh, that's a really quick look at this. And uh, it's just playing around with this. It's, it's quite a useful feature. And another thing I'll show you here quickly, let's just close this. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can uh, set up some sub-object uh, selection sets. Okay, so let's grab a teapot here. We'll just hide everything else in the scene and hit Z to zoom in on that. Okay, we'll also right click and convert this to double poly. Okay, and many times you'll have to, you know, make a huge selection of edges or polygons or whatever on a model. And it, you know, it can take a lot of time. You can spend like 15 minutes just selecting polygons. Okay, so what you can actually do is just make a selection. Uh, let's just do it on polygon for now. Okay, and we can actually save this out uh, so we can come back to it anytime we want. Okay. And if we have that selected, we go up to the button here and click this. You'll notice that this dialog uh, is changed. It's not the same one we had originally, okay? And it doesn't give us the uh, option in here to create a new uh, set for these polygons. Okay, so what we need to actually do is cancel this. With this selected, we'll go up into the pull down here and just click right in there, okay? We can actually type a name uh, up here and we'll just call this uh, teapot lid polys and we'll hit enter, okay? Make sure you hit enter there before you click off it. Okay, so now if I deselect these polygons, uh, if you go up here and pull this down, you can see that we have the uh, name in there. So we can just click that. It'll immediately give us that polygon selection back. Okay, let's do another one here. We'll just grab one on the handle and let's just grow that a few times. And we'll go up and we'll just call this handle and hit enter. Okay, and we'll click off that. And now we'll have the option to either select the handle polygons or those lid polygons. Okay. And this does work on a per object basis. So you can do this for any objects in your scene or all of the objects in your scene. And it also works on multiple sub objects here. So we don't need to do it just in polygons. We could actually do it in verts if we want. Okay, so let's click on vertex and we'll spin around here. Maybe grab these verts at the end of the spout. Okay, and we'll just go up and we'll call this uh, maybe spout verts and hit enter. Okay, and that'll save those as a selection as well. Okay, so while we're in Vertex, we can go up and you'll see that we only have the spout verts uh, option in here. We don't have the handle or the lid, okay? And that's just because we're in Vertex sort of object mode. Okay, so if we click this, you can see it's gonna give us that vert selection again. If you were to go over to Polygon and go back up here, you can see we have our Polygon sub object sets uh, here once again and the spout is gone. Okay, so it does work depending on what uh, level you're on independently from each other, okay? so we can just get those selections back anytime we want. Okay, so now if we go up here and we open this up, now you can see we have both of our selection sets in here. And you can still modify this a little further. Um, say you wanted to combine the handle into that selection set here, you can just click one and then control click the other set and then hit the combined option here. Okay, that's gonna pop up another dialog and let you create a new set. So let's call this both 
and hit OK. And we'll hit OK here. OK, so what that did was create a third set that, that combined both those selections together. And if we go up to the top, you can see we now have all three. So we can still select the lid ones independently or the handle. And if you choose the both option, it's going to have both of those selections uh, combined together. Okay. And there's a few other options um, in here. Um, we have delete, which obviously just deletes uh, one of the selection sets. So we'll delete that one. Uh, subtract A from B is just you want to uh, subtract one selection from another group. Uh, if you have ones that are um, kind of overlapping selections, you can subtract one from the other and so forth. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We'll just cancel that and we'll close this out. And if we go back to the main scene here, I'm just going to unhide all for a second. Okay, and it, once we're out of polygon so our mode, we're going to have our original uh, selection sets here the cylinder, spheres, and teapots. Okay, so we still have access to those anytime we want. Uh, when you're in so much mode, you'll only have uh, the options for that particular object and its particular selection sets for its sub objects. Okay. All right, so I guess that pretty much covers it, and hopefully, this will help you out a little bit. It's a really good thing to get in the habit of using, and uh, especially when working on really big scenes. Okay, so it's really, really not necessary if you're only working on a scene with a couple of objects, but when you get into bigger and more complex ones, it can really save you a lot of time uh, by using these to quickly select uh, different sets of objects. Okay, so I guess that about does it. Uh, hopefully it helped you out, and thanks for watching.